group of researchers led by Nicaras and Pereira surveyed the regions of Sri Lanka's diminishing forests, and after a two-month stay, found an average of only two lorises in 60 kilometers cubed of terrain. This yielded a statistical average of just 0 0.08 to 0.16 lorises every kilometer. To put this into perspective, 60 kilometers cubed of land equals approximately 120 football fields put together. So imagine a football field, and now imagine two small cat-sized lorises being placed on the field. Those two lorises might seem small in comparison to the football field, but imagine them in an area 120 times of that. That's the degree of variety of these tiny creatures. However, Nicarus and Pereira returned in 2006, and the figures were even more drastic, yielding a 0 0.02 animal per kilometer rating which is eight times worse, and this equates to about two lorises every 960 football fields. The main culprit behind the devastation of the loris population is blamed on habitat destruction. The loris, although a slow creature, without the ability to leap from limb to limb, still manages to migrate an average of several hundred acres every night, having an average home range of 6.500 acres. This large area of migration, however, is destroyed, and regional deforestation such as clear-cutting create isolated patches of forest and prevents any migration to occur, thus separating the population. Isolation of any population means less gene diversity, which is also known as founder's effect. This means that the pre presence of disease is more deadly as it is more abundant and contagious in such a small group. Isolation also negatively affects the loris population by creating greater competition over food. As the loris spans a large distance in search for its multitude of nourishments, with not enough food to go around, the population size is then decreased. Habitat destruction disrupts the loris directly. There are also major indirect effects that diminish the already fleeting loris population. With all the commotion that clear cutting and gem mining going on in the nearby regions, many other smaller species like prey are scared off or otherwise destroyed. In this practice, the loris is left unable to forage for food for itself during the night when it hunts. Other forms of endangering factors include activities such as poaching and taking the lorises out of their natural habitats as pets, further lowering the genetic diversity. So how can we save these little fellas? First of all, we can start by not capturing these lorises as pets, whether it's for our own household or for local zoos. Luckily for the lorises, Salmon Gamage of the University of Rihanna located two new locations where they are found, the Hagala District National Reserve and Bombarella Forest, expanding its known area of extent from 30 to 250 kilometers. So now it is our job to help keep this population ever growing. One way to do this is by not restricting their growth through projects such as expansion led by Sri Lanka's Wildlife and Nature Protection Society. Keeping these precious primates and reserves apportioned out by such societies ensures a healthy environment for dwindling populations such as the loris. In its currently tragic state, this all traces back to humans, as we were the ones that have pushed the lorises close to extinction. We should be the ones that help them back on their feet.